but a teacher. And, and what about the goal of increasing computer science literacy among non-computer scientists? Do, do, you, do you think that's a valuable goal, and, and what skills should we be looking to teach non-computer scientists? I think that that is a huge and interesting question. Yes, that is a, a big focus for me. That's why I did media computation in the first place. Here at Georgia Tech, all undergraduates are required to take a course in computer science. Um, and it's uh, for the first four years, we had one course that met that requirement. Um, and overall, the pass rate was around 78%, which is pretty good for a CS1, until you start splitting it out by different majors and different colleges. All of the majors from liberal arts, architecture, and management, all of those programs had um, a, around a 50% failure rate each semester, which are on failure rate. So students either withdrew or they, or they gave up. So we really believe that everybody on campus needs to know something about computer science. Um, but we, what we realized is that's not going to be the same course. It's not going to be the same computer science. So um, in media computation, we're explicitly teaching computing as a, as a form of expression or understanding how the computer can be used for expression. So um, that's, I, I really think that's an important thing for, for everybody to learn. I think, you know, I don't have an empirical a CS Ed research answer question to uh, answer to your question, Dutch. I think it's a really great question. If you have computer science in high school, do you, do, are you increasing the odds that your uh, students will value computer science even if they don't go into computer science as a major? Will they learn things about computer science that they will use in the rest of their lives? I don't know the answers. I think they're really important. Um, one of the things that I've talked about in my blog that I'd really like to see happen sometime is for an economist to estimate what is the cost in lost productivity due to computing illiteracy. All of the things that people do because they don't really understand what's going on in, in computing. You know, we know that most of the problems with cybersecurity is people problems, people who don't understand why you shouldn't give your name your password password, um, people who don't understand um, why the things that their practices are, are dangerous in any way. There's similar issues. Um, what is the cost of people not understanding that a byte is a byte is a byte, whether that byte is part of a JPEG, part of a Word file, or part of an instruction, and that's how viruses get into your system, because bytes can be anything. Um, issues of steganography, which is one of the things that I teach in my uh, media computation class, the idea that it really doesn't take that many bits to define a text message or to define even audio. One of the things we do is hide audio inside of pictures. It's really not hard to do. Um, that, I mean, understandable text. So that's, that's the kind of thing that I think that if you don't know these things, there are costs. It would be great to estimate those costs to figure out how, how expensive is it that we don't know enough about computing in people's daily lives. And that's not even to count things about end user programming. I mean, there's a bunch of evidence that says that for every software developer, there are between four and seven, some estimates go as high as four and nine, um, more end-user programmers, people who are not professional software developers but use programming as what they're doing. And that's today when we don't really support end-user programming pretty well. What if everybody had some computing in high school and undergraduate? How many more end-user programmers would we see in the world? And then maybe we really would see computing used as a form of literacy.